grab a fresh pair of pants, you're gonna need them as I scare the piss out of you with the topic today. Two horror films go head to head, Insidious versus Sinister. You requested it, you got it. Ethan, I'm apparently still in movies, Hawk, is the lead in Sinister. He's the typical horror film dad who's a writer with little time for his family. The guy's not likable in the slightest. I'm not sure if that was the intention or not, but seriously, this guy's not dad of the year. He moved his family into a house that's had multiple murders and missing victims. He's really the main focus of the film, and the wife and kids just get a handful of small scenes. There's a little bit of comic relief from one of the police deputies, and of course there's the old cop on his way to retirement, wants nothing to do with the writer. What are you doing in my town, son? Nothing for you here. Nothing but pain and sorrow. Pack your things and turn around. You're gonna want to. Because you're gonna be followed by some sort of a paranormal entity that's gonna end up f***ing you up. That was a spot on impression of him. Insidious had the better cast for me, and that's mainly because the people make logical decisions for the most part. Housewife slash musician, Raina Lambert is the focus here. Nothing really exciting about her character though, but she is the central one. She was still nice to watch though, because she's actually very concerned about the odd shit taking place in the house. And two, she's played by Rose Byron. Byron? Byron? B-Y-R-N-E. No idea how to say it. She's easy on the eyes. She's good to look at. She's attractive. I want to have sex with her. That was too much. It's almost a requirement to have a creepy kid in a horror film, and this one has Ty Simpkins as Rainey's son, Dalton. That's actually unfair to say. He never does go full creepy. He's just in a coma. I just assumed he would, and that's a testament to the script that he never does. He doesn't fall into that trapping. The highlight for me is actress Lynn Shea's character, the paranormal specialist. It was really fun to watch her and her two colleagues Ghostbuster around the house look for evidence of any paranormal activity. But these are scary movies. It's all about the villain. It's all about the threat. And here, I think they're about tied. I think they're about even. Because although they started out scary enough, by the end, I wasn't crying in the corner with my teddy like I thought I would be. I was actually almost laughing. Not a good sign. Insidious provides us with multiple astral projections, but the main baddie is a red-faced demon who is extremely dangerous. Unfortunately, when we really get a good look at him later, he looks almost cartoonish in nature. Sinister, in my opinion, has the scarier of the two villains, and that's thanks to Mr. Boogie's demented nature. But that final shot where he pops out of the corner for a little peekaboo, that was full on cheese. Dalton! 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 Sinister and Insidious started very different from one another, and I was scratching my head trying to figure out why the fans wanted me to review them together. Then it turns out they're actually very similar. They're both about demons trying to escape their world by attaching a living host, in order to carry out their dirty deeds. Done dirt cheap. I prefer the insidious approach though, mainly because I didn't have to shout at my TV every five seconds for the dumbass protagonist to do something logical. In fact, early in Insidious, the family moves out. It's like a half hour in and they're already out of the house. A couple crazy things happen, the wife's like, no, no, we're f***ing leaving. I, I was like, what? That's logical. In a horror movie? Ah. Sinister doesn't even bother with logic, and it's very frustrating to watch Ethan Hawke ignore the most obvious things ever. He sees ghost hands pulling him into the floorboards on his computer. He sees this, the evidence there. He finds out later that this is in fact some sort of paranormal creature who's eating children and killing families. He has a family and children. This guy is the worst. Nobody in their right in mind would stay in that house for one more night after seeing the shit he's seen. He refuses to leave the house until there's only 10 minutes left. Insidious is two thirds of a good story. It was so close to being a great horror film. Early on I'm watching and I'm loving it. I'm invested. Every time it went night, I'm like, okay, it's, it's gonna go down. It's gonna go timber in here. But then daylight comes and we still get some scary jumps. We get shadows in the corners. We get empty shots of darkness. But that final act, when you see the creature, it's over. It gets, it gets way too Looney Tunes. These are both shot very well, and it's rare to see a gimmicky camera angle. Yes, there are some cliches, like the boy coming out of the box, looking like something out of The Exorcist, body all mangled, twisted up like two pretzels having sex. I have no idea, I just say things. 
Jump scares are of course staple, but I mean, you can't have a horror without those. Our villains, our bad guys, they're left to our imaginations, and that can be the scariest place to go. Even when it is obvious, it still works really well. Like in Sinister, when there's the laptop sitting up and you can see Mr. Boogie's face there, just standing there, and you know at any given moment, he's gonna look, and even when he does it, boom! Still gets ya! I'm giving it to Sinister in this category because I really liked all the disturbing imagery. The party by the pool, the home and garden scene, the fire in the car. They were all very eerie, they were all very fun. Music and scary movies go hand in hand. Usually they're an extension of the script. It's like a laugh track, it's like a live audience telling you what you should be feeling in that moment. You hear that loud jump, you hear that loud pop in the music, and you're like, ah! It's all very par for the course, and that's both good and bad. Because while I'm expecting it, I wanted something a bit more impressive. As I've told you before, I have a bias towards the horror genre. I have a distaste for them in general. But these two weren't awful. Insidious was actually pretty good. I mean, there's, there's much better out there, but... Between the two, I'd go Insidious every day of the week. This isn't my area to swim in. I'm not familiar with this side of the pool. So why don't you guys, you horror experts, sounds like horror, you horror experts as well, let me know where these films stand on your list. Are they even close to the top? Give me some recommendations too. I'll do some more feuds on the, the scary franchises. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Ah! Jesus Christ!